Hi, in this video, we are going to solve 2010 second chance. So we have the function f, the function f defined on zero plus infinity, defined on zero plus infinity by fx equal x minus len x squared over x. So the function f defined on zero plus infinity. C is the name of its representative curve in an orthonormal system, unit one centimeter. So first part, we are going to determine the limit that fx as x tends to zero plus. Zero plus because of the domain from zero till plus infinity, so it is zero plus. And you are going to deduce an asymptote to see. So as you know from, we have four important limits in logarithm. The four important limits, I remind you of these four important limits. Limit as x tends to zero plus of ln x equal minus infinity limit as x tends to plus infinity of ln x equal plus infinity limit as x tends to plus infinity of ln x over x equal zero and the limit as x tends to zero of x ln x, which is equal to zero. So for important limits, you have to mem memorize limit as x tends to zero plus of ln x is minus infinity. Limit as x tends to plus infinity of ln x equal plus infinity limit as x tends to plus infinity of ln x over x is equal to zero and limit as x tends to zero of x ln x equal to zero. So in this exercise, <clears throat> we're going to calculate the limit as x tends to zero. So ln zero is minus infinity, minus infinity squared is a plus infinity, plus infinity over zero plus is plus infinity, zero plus infinity is plus infinity. Then, so, the first step, we first, we replace each x by zero plus, this is x is zero, this x is zero, <clears throat> this x is zero. Len zero is minus infinity, it is a square, over zero plus infinity. So we don't multiply first, we do the power. Minus infinity squared is plus infinity. <clears throat> Times minus, we get minus infinity. Now to, and he said, uh, deduce the asymptote. So here x tends to zero plus, y approaches minus infinity, x zero plus, y approaches minus infinity. So x equals zero, or the y-axis is a vertical asymptote. X zero is a vertical asymptote. <clears throat> now, determine the limit as x tends to plus infinity. <clears throat> we replace x by infinity. Infinity here, high x is infinity. Len x over x is infinity squared over infinity. Uh, infinity over infinity is indeterminate. So we have four indeterminate forms. One of them is infinity over infinity. So we can apply Hopital's rule. Or ln x over x, x is bigger than ln x. It will become number over infinity. Number over infinity will be zero. And here we have plus infinity, it is plus infinity. Or if we are going to use Hopital's rule, so, uh, we replace x by infinity, it becomes a plus infinity minus infinity over infinity. This infinity over infinity is indeterminate form. 
we have to determine this in determinate form. Then limit the fx as excess so plus infinity hospitals rule. Pay attention whenever we are going to use hospitals rule, we are we use it to the fraction part, not to x. We don't make the derivative of x. We make it bus whenever it is of the form u over v. Hopitals, it will be u prime over v prime. So this x remains x, as you see here, x minus derivative of ln x squared, derivative of ln x squared. We use the derivative of the power, derivative of the power u to the m, u to the power m, derivative of u to the power m. Don't forget that first. We make m u power m minus one times u prime, u prime. So len x squared. First we make the, we put the, uh, we have to make the derivative. Hide that two tensor to two len x into derivative of ln x, which is 1 over x. So it becomes 2 ln x over x. Then uh, the limit as x tends to plus infinity, we apply Hopital's rule, as we said, we make the derivative of the numerator over the derivative of the denominator. Derivative of ln x squared, let's see it, 2 ln x times 1 over x. Derivative of this x is 1. So then it will be x tends to plus infinity of x remains x, 2 ln x over x. Ln x over x, we have it. We have it a rule that it, it tends to zero as x tends to plus infinity. So this one is zero, x tends to plus infinity. So ln x over x tends to zero as x tends to plus infinity because x is much bigger than ln x. So the limit is plus infinity. And verify that the line D of equation y equal x is an asymptote y equal x is an asymptote to c. To prove an oblique asymptote, we have to prove that the limit as x tends to plus infinity of fx minus yd equal to zero. Limit as x tends to plus infinity of fx minus yd equal zero. So limit as x tends to plus infinity fx minus yd, fx minus yd, fx is x minus ln x squared over x, minus x, x and x will be simplified. It will be minus ln x squared over x. It is equal minus infinity over infinity. Now we can know that x is much bigger than ln x, we can put it equal to zero, or we use Hopital's rule Hopital's rule, derivative over derivative. We make the derivative of ln x, which is minus two ln x over x. Derivative of x is one. And once again, derivative of two ln x, a limit of two ln x over x as x tends to plus infinity, it is zero. Therefore, line D, y equal x, <coughs> is an oblique asymptote to C at plus infinity. Now the adjacent table, this is the adjacent table, shows the variations of the function phi over zero plus infinity and phi x equal x squared plus ln x squared minus 2 ln x. Verify that f prime x equal phi x over x squared. So we are, we are going to calculate f prime. F prime, this is F. <coughs> F prime, derivative del x is one. The, now ln x squared over x, it is of the form u over v. 
u prime v minus v prime u over v square. <clears throat> so the derivative will be derivative of x is one. Now u prime v minus v prime u over v square. Derivative of ln x squared, we have seen this one two times. It is two ln x over x. I put it two ln x over x times v, which is x minus v prime, v is x, v prime is one, one times ln x squared over x squared. X and x simplified, we take the LCM. The LCM is x squared, x squared times one is x squared, minus two ln x, and here pay attention, here we have a minus, high minus should be multiplied by all the numerator. See minus two ln x plus ln x squared, it is phi x, phi x mana yeha x squared plus ln x squared minus 2 ln x. We here mana yeha x squared plus ln x squared minus 2 ln x over x squared. So it is phi of x over x squared. <coughs> now, how to deduce that f is strictly increasing? For a function to be strictly increasing, <coughs> we should prove that the derivative of this function is positive. The derivative is positive. How to prove the derivative is positive and deduce? You know, we are going to use this table in order to prove the new f prime is related to phi x. So phi x should be positive. For f prime to be positive, phi should be positive. Since x squared is positive, phi is positive. Why phi is positive? If you, we look here that the minimum of phi is one. One is a positive number, so phi of x is positive. Minimum that phi x is one, and phi x is positive. So f prime is the ratio of two positive numbers, it is positive. So f prime is positive, so f is increasing. <clears throat> so here, but minimum that phi x equals one positive, then phi x is positive, then f prime x positive, so f is strictly increasing. Uh, here it is better to make the table of variations. Table of variations, we put the domain x, f prime x, f x, domain zero plus infinity, and it is increasing. Let d, I'll prove d, prove that d, D, which is here, the oblique asymptote, is tangent to C at the point A11. Prove that D is tangent to C at the point A11, and that D is above C for x different from 1. So we have two things to prove in this part, that D is tangent. To prove that D is tangent at A, A11 belongs to curve with A, f of 1, that in one minus ln one over one, which is one. In A belongs to the curve. Let's determine the equation of the tangent at the point A to the curve C. Equation of the tangent is y minus y A equals slope into x minus x A. Slope is determined by finding f prime of one, f prime of one. So the equation of the tangent a here one one. F prime of one is the slope of the tangent. The f prime we replace x by one in the derivative. One squared is one. Len one is zero. In minus two times zero is zero. Len one zero squared equal one. Then uh, the equation of the tangent will be y minus y a y minus one slope which is one into x minus one. We get y equal x y equal x is the equation of the line D. So the line D is tangent to C at the point A11. Also, we are going to show that uh, D is above C. How to prove that D is above C or C is below D, the same. <clears throat> to prove that C is below D, I find, I find the sign of fx minus yd fx minus y details the position between the curve and the line. So 
for uh, for c to be below d then fx minus yd should be negative so here in this uh, i didn't do it it is not written here so i will write it here fx minus yd is equal minus len x squared over x. Who are in x different from one? And at one, this ratio is zero. Minus len x squared over x, he less than zero. If x different from one, it means that C is below D. C is below D for every X different from one. Or D is above C. Part B. Verify that the tangent T, verify that the tangent T to C at the point with the abscissa E squared is parallel to D. Tangent at the point E with the abscissa E squared is parallel to D. You know that two lines are parallel if they have the same slope. So for the tangent, to be parallel to D, slope of the tangent should be slope of D. Slope of the line D is one. So I had I should prove that the slope of the tangent, uh, slope the tangent is equal also one. If if both equal to one, then the tangent is parallel to D. Now to determine the slope of the tangent at the point with the abscissa E squared, I calculate F prime of E squared and f prime of e squared should be equal to 1. Let's calculate f prime of e squared. f prime of e squared, we replace x by e squared in the derivative. We get e squared power 2 plus ln e squared power 2 minus 2 ln e squared over e squared to the power 2. e squared squared, we multiply the power, e power 4. ln e squared e to ln e, the power means a property, ln e to the n is n ln a, it's here 2 ln e squared minus 2 into 2 ln e <clears throat> over e power 4. Then we get e power 4, ln e is 2, 2 squared is, uh, two, ln e is 1, half 1, ln e is 1, 2 times 1 is 2 squared, we get 4, ln e is 1, minus 4, we get 2 times 2 is 4, over e power 4, which is equal 1, which is equal slope of d. It means that the slope of the tangent, uh, slope of t equals slope of d, then t is parallel to d. So for two lines to be parallel, they should have the same slope. Prove that the equation fx equal to 0 has exactly one root alpha and verify that alpha is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. To verify fx equals zero, we have two ways. We can say that the function is increasing from minus infinity till plus infinity. Then C cuts the x-axis once. So fx equals zero has one root. I will repeat it f is increasing from minus infinity to the plus infinity. Then c cuts the x-axis only at one point. So fx equals 0 has one root. To verify this root between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6, I determine f of 0 0.5, which is b, would be negative, and f of 0 0.6 would be positive. Or I can say f is continuous and strictly increasing from between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. I calculate zero, uh, f of 0 0.5 and f of 0 0.6. Of One of them is negative and the other is positive. Here, 
F is continuous and strictly increasing over 0 0.5, 0 0.6. F of 0 0.5 by using the calculator, we get minus 0 0.46, which is negative. F of 0 0.6 is 0 0.165, which is positive. Then alpha is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. Draw D, T, and C. To draw, first we have to draw the oblique asymptote and then the tangent. <clears throat> and we take the particular points. So, uh, this is the orthonormal system, a unit one centimeter. Line dy equal x. So, y equal x is. Uh, passes by the point zero zero and passes by the point A, which is one one. This is A, one one. Uh, to draw the line, ta the tangent, the point here E squared, 6.8, the whole inner abscess is E squared. Then it is 7.3, 6.8 by using the calculator. You find E squared our calculator. 7.3, 6.8. You locate point E here, you locate this point, and you draw, and we know that the line D is parallel to, to the, the tangent is parallel to D. The second line is the tangent. The tangent is parallel to D and passes by the point 7.3, 6.8. If to draw this line, not necessary to find its equation, we know it is parallel. I put a 1, 1. I put alpha. The alpha is between 0 0.5 and 0 0.6. This is alpha here, where the curve cuts the x-axis here, uh, where the curve cuts the x-axis. Uh, we take, uh, using the calculator, we take uh, mod table. We take starting from 1, ending at 10. And we can use some of these points. The curve is increasing. 0 minus infinity from here, it increases. It cuts the x-axis at alpha. It makes a tangent at A to the line D. It is below line D. It will, not, it will cut D only at A. It is below, but it cuts it at 1 here. Then the curve will go and make a tangent at this point, 7.3, 6.8. Then it goes till plus infinity near the oblique asymptote. Tangent at A, then it will make a tangent, another tangent, uh, another tangent here. We have a tangent on the oblique asymptote. By taking the particular points, it will be easier. In part seven, it is not required for this year, the inverse function. Still, we have a part eight. A part eight, calculate integral from alpha to one, fx dx in terms of alpha. Alpha to one, the alpha, high alpha, little like my home, fx equals zero, from alpha to one. So integral from alpha to one, fx dx equals x minus ln x squared over x, dx between alpha and 1. OK, i equals alpha del 1 x dx minus 1 del alpha ln x squared over x dx. And the x, it is simple to calculate its integral x squared over 2. Now to, we calculate alone integral of ln x squared over x. Uh, now, as I told you before, whenever we have integration with len and there is x in the denominator, we make method of substitution. Method of substitution, we take u equals len x, then du is equal, then uh, du equal 1 over x dx and x dx equal x du. You change the bounds for x equal alpha, u equals len alpha for x equal 1 
u equal than one, which is zero. Uh, so equal from alpha to zero. Uh, this is, should be from zero to alpha. Uh, so here, from alpha to one, we have here the integral, not from one to alpha. It should be alpha here and one here. So ln alpha to zero, u squared over x times x du, x and x du, the x will x simplify. Now integral l power, we add the power by one, that's here u cube over three, between zero and alpha, equal minus alpha cube, or she will replace u by zero, minus, then uh, minus, we replace u by alpha, so i equals the integral of x, x squared over 2 between alpha and 0. This one should be 0. OK, why there should be? OK, alpha 1, this one, not 0, alpha and 1, because here we don't, we don't change the variable. Alpha cube over 3. First of the time, we replace x by 1, that's here, half, minus alpha squared over 2. This one becomes plus alpha cube in the minus on minus or minus, let's say the plus alpha cube over three. The last part also not required because we area between uh, C and C prime. Uh, C prime, we didn't throw the gear C prime, the, the curve of the inverse function, so it is not required. 